Today I want to update you on a couple of things before we start doing anything else. The first thing is, remember my tulips that were poking through the snow a few weeks ago? I want to show you them. I'm getting really excited. I love gardening. I watch a lot of gardening videos. If you want to know what I watch, I love Garden Answer, obviously, but also Flower Hill Farm. If you like gardening, you should watch. Here are the tulips. They're pretty high now. Some buds are coming up. Let me get you closer. You see right there? There! You will see a bunch of little buds popping up. And this one is starting to show color. It's supposed to be like an apricot color, I think. My peony is poking through as well. This is my tiny apple tree and I transplanted daffodils all around it, but I don't think we'll get daffodils this year. Can you see Lennox? He's so cute. I don't think we'll get daffodils because they're very short and small. I don't know if we planted them too deep or if just moving them at the wrong time did it. But I'm excited about the tulips. I'll keep you posted. And the other thing I wanted to update you about was those two paintings. I was asking you your opinion with the speckles a couple of videos ago. There was also my self-portrait. I want to show you what I've done. I worked on them and I landed on something. First, this is what it looked like at the beginning. There were speckles a little bit everywhere. I wasn't sure if maybe there was too many and you gave me a whole bunch of good advice. And in the end, I landed on a more subtle version with the speckles around the sound hole and on the fretboard, but I covered the background. I like how subtle it is. I get the effect, but in a more focused way. Let me know what you think. And here I have the portrait I was talking to you about. First, I'll give you a look at what it looked like last time you saw it. There's a few things in the facial features that I wasn't sure about and the hat also had to be worked on. And the pops of gray, I wasn't sure if I loved it or if I wanted to keep having bold colors or just black. I was kind of going back and forth about it. Here's. The result to you it might not look that different obviously there's the two big pops of colors here that i decided to go with i reworked the hat in a more minimal way and i worked a lot on the facial features to do a few subtle changes that i'm really happy with overall i love the composition i like this line here i like the bold pops of colors the blending of the pops of color in the face going through the, the head and the hat. One of you suggested to do knit, like a knit pattern or like a, a lace pattern in the hat. I was considering that, but I think I'm, I'm satisfied with this. As for the pops of colors, I'm not sure about the balance. If it's because it creates an imbalance to me. I feel like if it was black, the focus would be strictly here and we would really look at the main subject. Is the imbalance interesting or not? I like it for now, but it might change. Let me know what you think. Right now, what I think I would like to work on is the website a little bit. I have to figure out what types of photos I want to feature on the website. It's my first time trying to sell art online and I'm not sure what I'm doing, but I'm trying to do my best. Taking photos of those paintings in a very accurate way is my goal. I'm not going to try to enhance the colors in any way. I'm going to try to get them as close to reality as it is so that the person looking 
through the pictures can get a real feel of how it would be to have the physical painting in their space. So I want close-ups and I also want like a reference point, maybe me holding the painting would give a reference point of the size of it and how it feels. So I have to figure out how to capture those paintings accurately to get that feeling through because obviously buying a painting is a big purchase so I want to give as much information as possible but at the same time I don't want to put too many photos for each painting because then it's too much stuff to go through right so one photo of the painting itself is obvious one close-up detail of maybe imperfections if there's textures or raised little bits of dry brush strokes so that people could get a feel of that whether to see if whether they like it or not and one picture in situation so whether it be on the wall with like a, a chair besides it to see the scale or me holding it I'm gonna try a few options maybe Lennox besides the painting I don't know I have to try a few options to see what's accurate but also visually interesting and pleasing and also I want to do a um, template listing online seeing how I could lay things out to make it to get all the information there but for it to be very simple to grasp I don't want too many words or complications I want it to be simple on the website so a template listing and a few photos that's what I'm gonna try to work on if you're not sure I have maybe hmm, five paintings to go ish before I'm done with the collection so I'm not quite there yet but I'm three quarters of the way there and I have a beautiful studio assistant right now let me show you completely ready to help at any given moment the cutest boy in the world when I say cutest he knows it's him if you haven't had your cute fill today here it is just for you hello Miss Lennox Now I'm gonna go and input all those photos in the computer, work on the listing. How do you like taking photos of yourself? I really dislike it. I'm really not good at it. I freeze up, it looks not natural and very stiff. But it's not a big deal because I could always take a photo where it's cropped, you know, where I could just focus on the painting. It's more for scale 
that I was trying a photo with myself in it for the listing. I think I'll need some shots where I'm in my studio space uh, kind of working on the paintings because that's always nice to see. But for the listing of a given painting to purchase, I just need a shot in situation like in a room to give a feel for the scale of the painting in a room. And right now I'm going to go on the editor of my website. I'm using Squarespace. I've mentioned that before when I talked about my plan for the year. I'll be linking the playlist of all of these paintings if you're curious, like in order. So I'll be focusing on a template listing. I'm not going to edit the photos perfectly. Usually I would go in Photoshop and really focus on the colors to have the colors as accurate as possible. Right now I'm going to select a couple pictures and use them as a placeholder to edit my nice web page to make everything super clear and simple for whoever would be looking at it. Focusing on layout and design right now. I want to go through a few thoughts that I had during the process of taking photos and setting up the website just so that if you're planning on doing it, you can avoid some mistakes that, I, that I've made. When taking photos, the best way to take accurate photos is to be outside on an overcast day. I feel like that's the best light. If it's very sunny, it's not gonna work. And indoors, it's kind of hard to capture depending on your light setup. When it comes to the page layout and Squarespace, I'm using Squarespace. I'm not sponsored. I wish I was. I love Squarespace. It's a super professional tool. Everything is there. You can run a full business online with Squarespace. Here's the layout I came up with. The first page is all the paintings, basically the gallery shop view with all the paintings that will be there at a glance. And of course you can go within a painting, there's more photos and there will be a description, pricing and all that. If you want to go that route of having a more professional website to sell art online, I would say to give yourself a good month of trying to figure out and set everything up, getting all the tools, linking up your PayPal account to, to receive payments, give payments and all that stuff. It takes a long time. That's what I was figuring out. Nothing is complicated. Everything is easy to figure out, but it takes time. It's just one of those things where you have to dig in and look at all the menus. There's a lot of menus so that everything fits your needs. So it's a question of time and patience. I love it and I'm happy with it. But for my personal situation, I think I might not have needed all of that. Since I've never sold art online and I don't have a huge client base, I guess that going the full professional website way might be a little 
overdoing it but i'm still doing it because i want to learn about it i want to know the information so that one day it'll be all set up so i'm it's a choice i'm making right now to kind of learn when things are not super hectic if you're starting out and you don't want to complicate things you want to keep it very simple and fast i would advise to go on instagram or facebook depending on where all your friends are to sell your art get really nice photos a whole bunch of photos post your painting for sale put the title the dimensions really important and the price right on there and advise people to direct message you for purchase and i would advise to put the price there because very often people would like a piece but they're too shy to ask how much it costs and then having to say oh it's too expensive for me i can't because it's kind of embarrassing to tell someone i don't have enough money i want it but i don't have enough money it happened to me a few times that i reached out to people on instagram because i like their painting and then it turned out it was a little bit too much for what i could afford and i had to say oh i can't afford it so i felt bad didn't want to make them feel bad so to me, it's better to lay out what the price is. This way people know if they can afford it and also they know whether it's sold or not sold. Instagram would be my best recommendation because there's a lot of people that could discover your paintings and it's a super simple way to do it. I'm going the complicated way, but it's good. I'm learning. Once I'm done with this, I'm gonna know a lot of information, which is fun. I like to learn new things. The next time I see you, I'll be working on this painting. It's a nice little piano design with a different color palette, which I really like. I have a few ideas. I'm gonna show you my thought process behind it in the next video. If you like those paintings, you wanna know when they come out, go to my website and sign up the VIP subscription list. I'm not gonna bother you. I'm gonna send emails only when new painting collections come out. So if you're interested, go there. And I've created a playlist dedicated to my whole selling art online for the first time journey is here you can go watch it it's in order of when i first started if you want more inspiration and i will see you in just a few days thanks for watching